The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where it is that you are uh, joining us from on this webinar. I am Denny Chapman, Jr., and I am a managing partner with the Chapman Group. I'm also going to be your moderator and uh, source of question answerer and material distributor when the webinar is done, uh, all about the profile of a best-in-class strategic account manager, alignment and selection modeling for the right SAM. While we have some people joining us on the webinar and uh, hopping on the screen, and, and, and I'm going to go over a few administrative things. One, everybody who is on this presentation will be getting a copy of it, uh, either a PDF and or a link to a recording of the webinar, in which you can share with any of your uh, fellow employees or peers that you think might find value in what it is that we are going to share today on best-in-class strategic account managers. Second, in the chat boxes on the end of your screen in the go to webinar area are areas where you can enter and uh, type in any types of questions you may have on the material we're covering. And towards the end, Dennis and I will be taking time to answer those questions as much, as, as much time as we possibly can. We know that everybody's busy. We're going to try to keep the content on the webinar to about 35, 40 minutes so we have to, uh, a sufficient amount of time to actually answer any questions that you all might have towards the end. So let me give a quick introduction. Uh, the profile of the best in class strategic account manager is going to be presented by Dennis Chapman Sr., who has many more years of experience in sales and sales management and strategic account management than he might admit because that might show his age a little. Um, but it's good for you all because you are going to be hearing from a worldwide recognized thought leader in all things strategic account management. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the baton over to Dennis, and he's going to present what the selection modeling criteria and profile attributes of a best-in-class SAM should be. So Dennis, the floor is yours. Well, Denny, thank you very much. I, uh, I always welcome these opportunities because they, uh, number one, uh, require a little bit of preparation and, uh, and, and enable me to think a little bit before these as well. And uh, probably, you know, much like the participants today, I usually walk away with probably a few nuggets myself that uh, either we can use in our business or certainly with the clients we work with today in the area of strategic account management. Um, you know, and I always like to say, you know, thank you and kudos to the, the, the many participants that we have today, because any time you take a, a, a chunk of time out of your busy, hectic schedule that we all have in today's sort of busy, noisy world, uh, we, we really appreciate how busy that is uh, and how valuable that time is. But actually, you know, it's this whole thing about how do we all get better and better we do. And today's topic, I think, is you know, probably baseline, foundational, probably one of the most important pieces around strategic account management, and really almost any, any, any position in an organization. So uh, without further ado, you know, I'd like to talk, you know, I, I'd like to maybe start off today with a little story, um, because I just so apropos and basic. Uh, I recently, um, it took a little longer than I thought, completed reading the book Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. And, um, and we all get different kind of messages when we read a book. And uh, there was both the enjoyment as well as the learning. And it was quite interesting to, to sort of hear the whole story of the evolution of Apple, et cetera. But we, you know, as I was thinking about today and I thought about the book, it was really interesting for me to understand through the evolution of um, Apple how different the role of the of either Steve Jobs and or the CEO was in the organization. You know, every moment of time from probably the, the late 80s all the way through even today um, and, and up until uh, Steve Jobs uh, passed on, um, there was a totally almost different role description. And even how the organization of Apple evolved and the kind of company they were and what products and solutions they were bringing to market as well as 
their customer base, um, the role of the CEO and the leader evolve, and then the whole marketplace as competition and, and consolidation, whatever you want to refer to it as, evolve, the role and how it, it varied. And it really was highlighted in the book because, you know, there were certainly up and down stories of when Steve uh, had the role of CEO, not had the role of CEO, and, and went off and did certain other things um, or was pressured to do certain other things. And I think that's a very apropos start of today's topic because I think we live in that same kind of dynamic world as it relates to strategic account managers. If I think back many years ago, the role of an account manager and who we might have put in that role uh, was much different than, than what we're seeing today in the whole evolution um, around strategic account management and or strategic account managers. So I think one of the probably key learning points to start with today is understanding that this, this role is much different than maybe some of us grew up with years ago. And there's some real compelling reasons why it's important to have the right SAMs. You know, one, one example is in, a, in, a, in an article we saw called New Breed of the B2B Buyer, Rules of Engagement by Joel York. Customers today are quite often 60% through their buying cycle or the selling cycle before they want to engage with a sit person. I keep that in mind because that's really all I'm saying that they don't want to engage with a salesperson. They want to more engage with a thought leader or a knowledgeable account manager and your account management team. Another fact, a little quote that we came across from John Russell of Harley Davidson is the more you engage with customers, the clearer things become and easier it is to determine what you should be doing. And I think the key operative word in there is engage with customers. Uh, customers today, for the most part, probably don't want to be sold to. They want to be collaborated with, engaged with. And we know that as you look at the right side of your screen from feedback that our customers are getting um, from voice customer surveys that we do today clients. They, they expect their account managers or their, their suppliers to really know their business better and provide guidance and insight and tell them about upcoming issues and quantify the value and deliver. And probably very importantly, they really want them to be very client-centric. Um, not that they don't appreciate that they have to represent both the client as well as the supplier organizations, but the client would like to would like to at least hope that they're in a very high number one position. So today, I'd like to take um, maybe those first couple messages about how the world is so different. And today, I would argue that uh, the the role of the strategic account manager is a profession versus maybe a, a role that might have looked like before. And I'd like to explore, you know, these six different areas of behaviors and competency, attitude, skills, style, experience, and tangibles as it relates to probably the biggest challenge we all have, uh, and that is putting the right people, you know, in those right roles. So that's, that's where we're headed today. Um, a model that I think is important to keep in mind is a model that I encountered many years ago, and really as we start building and crafting the design of the of today and the future strategic account manager, we need to understand how important it is to understand what skills it's going to be required, what kind of product solution they're going to represent and deliver, and especially what expectations of this particular role is. And by the way, I didn't say person, I said role, as well as what aptitudes that they're they're going to need to bring into the role. So this is extremely important because when it's all said done, if we're really, really going to optimize talent and manage talent, we really have to clearly understand the specifics of the role and responsibilities of the SAM, the, the profile, uh, the talent assessment that, that we use to aid us in the selection process, and then even how we're going to coach this role. Because we see this every day, whether it be in business, in life, in sports, but how critical it is to have the right people in the right role. Example of what we've learned from. We know that many organizations for many years promoted their best salespeople to role of sales manager. We know that in, in many organizations, 
uh, organizations promoted their best salespeople to the role of strategic account manager or account manager. We also now know that that may not have been the best operational practice and or strategy because the roles of a sales manager, a coach, or a strategic account manager may require a different talent set than in the previous position. I'm not saying that some people weren't successful in that, but it does require, as we know, a different talent set. And we also know that if we look at some basic definitions as it relates to strategic account management and SAMA, which we're proud to say we're a very active uh, member of, and, and myself as a, as a past board member for um, almost seven years, uh, we know that in a strategic account management role that SAM programs are so, so much about relationship management according to the definition of SAMA. And then if you look at our definition of strategic account management, you'll see that it's not just a relationship management, but it's really an operational relationship model, a SAM program, and the person guiding this, leading it on behalf of a supplier specifically uh, to a customer has to bring that sales, business development, delivery skill set and talent to the table. So the, the effect of SAM, you know, when it's all said and done, needs to be able to deliver this. You know, the right outcomes for both the, their customer, the account, the supplier within timelines, and, and probably most important, as you see here, with the resources available. Uh, so keep that in mind that the, the, the SAM of the today and the future is really a resource manager. Uh, uh, certainly a, a budget manager because they got to keep it within operating budgets and they got to still hit the numbers which we call performance ratios. Very, very critical. Now what are those core responsibilities that we see of the SAM in 2015 and beyond? We know they need to be able to build teams and make the right selections uh, of the team. We know they need to orchestrate that team and lead it and guide it. Uh, and in many cases, they need to do this without the right authority. Uh, quite often, they have responsibility without authority. So they need to guide this virtual team. They also need to guide the client. So they need to work through and uh, without a direct account of you know, responsibility for the client's team, they got to guide the client's team and they got to create this collaborative account plan within their own organization and quite often with, with the customer. So they got to be an exquisite planner. And ultimately they own, if you, have, if you use a racy concept, responsibility, accountability, consult and inform, they really do uh, are accountable for everything as it relates to the customer. And in some cases they're also responsible, which means they're meant to do it. So let's specifically get into some of these things like behaviors. You know, so what are those right things that these people that we put in the role of a strategic account manager that we expect them to be able to do? Well, certainly when we hire or craft uh, a person into this role, uh, we, we know they need to be able to lead because leadership is going to be critical for both their team and the client. We know their need to be very focused on being able to execute things like relationship management and opportunity management, financial acumen and, and even operational delivery. We know that they're going to need to be able to present and review and interpret information because of the requirements of both internal and external business reviews. And we know they're going to need to be big, very good planners. Um, you know, a, a case in point, a lot of people grow up in sales in a more reactive transactional mode but a SAM needs to be one who is a little more methodical, a planner. And there should be evidence in their certain in their own DNA that they're well organized, well planned, because that is probably one of the foundational points of a SAM program, for example, is an effective account plan, which they're going to own to make sure that their team not only develops, creates, and updates, but operates in accordance to. We know there are certain competencies and aptitudes so that they can do the right things well. And, and this is uh, an important data point here that we've learned recently. What are some of those 
from the customer standpoint that make certain SAMs stand out from the rest. One of those is, is that they really know their client's business and marketplace so well they could almost be called a trusted advisor or a thought leader. We also know that they speak relevant in relevant terms. They're good listeners. They, they can grasp information and, be, and, and feed back relevant information to customers. That's an interpretive capability. We know that they're very focused and comfortable working high, wide, deep in their customer. I, they may use their team in some of that, but we certainly know that they're just not at an operational procurement level, that, they be, that they're comfortable at maybe a higher, higher level within their accounts and using executive sponsors and their team at other levels. And we know they have a very strong business economic acumen, that they understand how to translate solutions of their, of their organization to the customer in economic terms. They, they can work with their team and the customer in, in, in analyzing and determine the positive impacts of, of the effect of cost savings or cost avoidance or, or revenue of their solutions, which means they probably are pretty good with analytical skills and spreadsheets, those type of tools and processes as they move forward. We also know, and, and this is probably one of the more evolving areas that we want to key into as it relates to a strategic account manager is they understand these things. These are quite often some of the top corporate priorities that we see in strategic accounts today. Strategic accounts are expecting operational excellence. They're expecting profitability and cost control. They're expecting unique customer market sustainability for the environment. Uh, and even sustainability related to the environment, and they're expected a supplier to speak to the implications of how they're working within the environment, diversity, and other areas. So not only do they need to be able to represent our solution set really well, they need to be able to connect to today's strategic accounts priorities, of which these are some of the more common, if not some of the quite often um, most frequent ones that we're seeing in today's corporate strategic accounts. We also know that the SAM, as we start to, you know, sort of take that clay and put it on this, mold it into today and tomorrow, we know they need to operate strategic and on a strategic level. We know they need to be able to bring all of the supplier assets to bear. Um, and not just products. We know that they need to go high wide uh, in their talent level and experience to help the client meet their objectives and orchestrate the team. And what we do know is strategic account managers are not an extra layer of management between the client um, and, and their counterparts and the supplier. They are delivering value translated into economics to the customer. They almost assimilate into being the customer while they have to represent both the customer, the account, as well as the supplier almost equally as well. And, and what are some of those skills that when we talk about the strategic account manager that we're expecting to see? Well, we know that it's much different in strategic account manager to be a relationship manager. There is a big difference from sales. And we, when we look at key high-value activities on a constant, consistent basis that need to be executed by a strategic account management team or program, you can start to see the skill set that's so different. You don't see selling process or selling skills or models. You start to see things in the skill bucket of C-level relationship building skills, leadership, Process project management, problem solving, economic value calculations, and a, and a real mindset for execution, delivering, having a real bias for getting things done, results. And there are also people that are, are uh, very um, uh, used to or work better 
when you start talking about different kinds of measurements in addition to revenue and profitability. They are driven by KPIs, uh, which key performance indicators, the, the voice of the customer, the relationships, innovation. They're, they're driven by core foundational metrics of the relationship. So just so when we leave the skill area, they need to have the skills to execute what all of us would define in our own unique businesses as those high value activities that are those activities in our SAM program that are going to bring the results for both the customer as well as us as supplier that we need to be able to execute on. And they need to not only be able to do them, but they need to be able to execute them. Because really when you look at the strategic account manager or the strategic account management team, it's always about doing the right things the right number of times to the right people by the right people. And in this case today, we're starting to craft, uh, and I will summarize at the end these data points of what all this translates into, of what does the right person, the SAM, look like for the future. Because there is a cadence, a recommended cadence, both internally and externally, that a strategic account manager needs to work uh, uh, both towards as well as with. And these are some of their high value activities, as well as external high value activities that need to be executed either on a monthly, quarterly, or semi-annual basis. By the way, it's a good idea, and this is probably the biggest gap we see quite often in the hiring and selection of strategic account managers, is to have the high value activities actually spelled out specifically in a job description. And that way, you can discuss those in the interviewing process or selection process, and there's clarity around what's expected of the strategic account manager. Style does come into play because your style, your ability to get people, others, both the customer and within your own organization, to contribute and participate is very critical. Quite often I've been asked, so how would you summarize the role of the strategic account manager. And I, and I think of that role as, if you look in the upper left, as the, as the orchestra leader. They're literally leading their resources, their resource team, on behalf of the customer to enable all, both the customer and the supplier, to reach their strategic initiatives on an enterprise basis, which is a more even complex situation. So they're really ensuring that both the client and supplier meet objections, objectives, they've got to lead these cross-functional teams, they've got to have a deliver positive economic impact and facilitate account planning and, and opportunity management, they've got to support the supplier's mission, and they have to develop and coordinate all these relationships. So it's a little bit every day as an orchestra leader, they have to be able to call upon the strings, the percussions, the brass at the right time. So there's multiple functions that they're leading and guiding well beyond transactional revenue creation. So I'm looking for the orchestra leader. In my strategy, I want evidence that the person that I put in that role of strategic account manager, I want evidence, I want experience that they know that, that I'm comfortable with that they can be that orchestra leader both internally, work the internal aspects of my organization, which is probably as critical as orchestrating the client. So experience. Experience plays a critical factor in SAM selection. We need to really take a hard look at, their, at an individual's professional experience, what marketplace, what types of customers, what types of solutions, products, services, we got to make sure there's a good professional alignment. Remember, the customer is expecting them to bring in thought leadership. That's got to come in with the package. We got to make sure that they're accustomed or aligned to this role. As I talked about, being a leader, having business acumen. That's why in many cases we're seeing today more of a general manager approach to the strategic account manager versus the salesperson approach. And finally, 
we definitely want somebody who is performance results oriented. We want somebody who can show us that they've been focused on delivering extraordinary results. By the way, it's also a good idea. You're going to have certainly a pay scale or a targeted compensation package. Sometimes it's a pretty good idea to understand, is this person bringing in, especially coming from the outside, an experience level that lines up to what you're going to be paying? Example, I've seen organizations that have this lucrative compensation plan for a strategic account manager, and they're considering candidates who may have only made half that much in previous positions. Certainly there's a lot of reasons to explore there, but understand there should be some similarity in the performance results and income, some correlation there. Then we're dealing with these things we call the intangibles. And, and maybe the best way to think of these are the inner organization that you want to make sure they fit into, the cultural fit. I encountered this model years ago, and I think it's a good way to maybe just stimulate some thinking around what does cultural fit really mean. And it really means, you know, I use the acronym SPIES. You know, what does our social culture in our organization and our customers look like? What's the psychological expectations that we have? What, what, is, what does it look like our best strategic account managers, which, by the way, I've just introduced how important it is, and it's going to come up shortly, to benchmark maybe against our best. By the, by the way, results only don't necessarily mean our best. We also have to incorporate the voice of the customer, what they think or consider are the best as well as results. We, we, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, we live in a, way, a world today that smarter is important. We need people who can ec uh, calculate economic value, who can use the right tools, who can understand financials, that, who have a reasonably good education, and who are intellectually able to do the job. There's going to be stress. And emotional intelligence is equally important. And when I say spiritual, I don't necessarily refer purely to religion, but I do refer to the value system. So whether it be family, whether it be community, whatever it is, we want to make sure that there's this, this uh, value system that they're bringing in because today's customer is probably going to understand and expect that they want to work with somebody who has a very strong commitment to a, to a good value system. So these are some of what I call the intangibles. So before we finish and open up our dialogue for certainly Q&A, you know, ultimately it would be a good idea to take many of these data points that I've shared today and have some form of an instrument. Like we use something we call a SAM competency profiler that you can use, certainly not as the only assessment instrument, but and, and it's certainly not a, always a pass-fail because there's obviously other ingredients, but I do want to get inside, inside the person that I'm considering for this very important role within our organization so that I can make effective selections. Now, specifically, what are some of those important things that we need to consider when we do SAM competency modeling. Well, I've talked about each of these areas, and you're certainly able to read these, and you'll be receiving this documentation. But in experience, there's a checklist of, of seven factors that really should fit in the, in the qualifying process. Is this person probably going to be highly successful as a SAM? These are the skills that we would look in that kind of person. And these are the types of aptitudes, whether it be creativity or innovativeness, problem solving. These are the aptitudes that we're looking for. In addition to that, we have expectations that we're looking for that they, we want to make sure that the, it's more about client centricity and the team and being a thought leader. These are these expectations that I want to be able to look at my uh, sort of my document or my 
SAM competency profile model and be able to hopefully say yes, 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 and ultimately end up with a rating. And unfortunately, we live in a, in a world of analytics, but if I consider these six areas, I should ultimately end up with some kind of rating on a scale of maybe 0 to 100 that says this person is a 70% or more fit for this role. By the way, that may be a good fit because when I benchmark that against my best that I have today, that's exactly what they score out because sometimes I can't get it all, but I'll get most of it, and that leads to much more successful behavior and performance. And then we live in a very technology-oriented world. I've got to make sure I've got the right technical skills in both the tools they're going to use, but as well as my own solutions. And then finally, as I mentioned, these intangibles. For example, coachability. You know, are they a team player? Can they be coached? Can they work with a team? So these are the critical six areas when you're looking at the selection and, and building the, the optimum SAM team that need, we need to be considered, that we need to consider. So our five-point prescription for success is really do some benchmarking, number one. Understand what works best for you as it relates to these critical areas. Second is make sure you got a, a real detailed position description for the SAM and include the high value activities that you would expect them to be performing that you can actually talk about uh, or hear about in your interview process. Make sure that you get some feedback um, either from customers they've worked with in your organization or references that know them that you understand that you get uh, that they align to the needs and expectations of your customer. And finally, be very careful to make sure you look beyond just your salespeople for these roles. There could be very good, effective strategic account managers in finance, in marketing, in HR, and they're, they're sort of like people that are living in this little area, and they're saying, let me out, let me out, I can do a great job with our customers. And finally, uh, make sure that you correctly identify the compensation structure so that you ensure that that lines up um, uh, to the person you're interviewing from both uh, a motivational standpoint but also a career standpoint. You know, just as an example, what many organizations are doing today is they're creating these benchmarks as sort of a case study, and they're, and they're looking at their current team and, and going through an evolutionary process and saying, okay, how do I, how do I ultimately rebuild myself? And that's what some companies are doing. So I can look down the road in two or three years, because quite often it takes two or three years to effectively launch an effective SAM program. How do I look down the road and say, not only do I have the right accounts, because I've done good segmentation, but now I have the right account leaders, strategic account managers guiding us and the customer in this initiative. Okay, so with with those points in mind, you know, I'm going to turn it over to Denny because I know we've gotten some questions in, okay, um, and I would like to offer up that. Uh, before I turn it over to Denny for to us to address some of the questions that have come in, I would like to also then say thanks, and this is this is an extremely important endeavor to make sure that we have the right people in this role of strategic account manager. Danny? Thank you. Um, Got to give me a minute here. OK. Um, so we have a couple questions. We don't have a bunch, but if you have them, go ahead and type them in and get them in. Um, we have about 15, 20 minutes that we could take to answer any questions you may have. The only bad question is no question. And the first one has to do, well, the first one has to do with um, hiring the SAMs. And, and somebody wants to know, do you think it's better to hire SAMs internally, you know, promote from within, or to hire them from outside the organization? You know, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, I, I, and I, I think I have to answer that a couple ways. I, I think my preference would be if my talent pool permits, and when you think back of what we covered today around all these six areas of what we need to look at, if my talent pool enables me to, I think it's always advisable to hire from within. That being said, however, 
I also think it's advisable to bring in a little bit of talent from the outside. And that talent from the outside is critical because it maybe can bring some other thinking and creativity to the process and to my program. And how would you suggest an organization differentiates their compensation structure from other sales or business developers? So that, that's a great question because this is one that quite often we see is a little convoluted. So understand that, that sales compensation is, is much more oriented to opportunity management capture versus strategic account management compensation, which is much more oriented towards relationship management. So I would probably say a lot of times sales compensation is a 60% base, 40% incentive. However, a relationship management compensation uh, for a SAM should probably be a little more around probably 80% base and then maybe 10% around revenue. However, there should be this bonus criteria uh, which we call key, key performance indicators that are re that basically reward executing and performing the high value activities of the SAM and or SAM team, like account planning or customer engagement or VIP trips. So the first difference is certainly base distribution. Second is the criteria for reward. It's not just revenue. Okay. And there's one more question. What should I do with my current infrastructure that I have managing my strategic accounts when I hire a new SAM? So my, my advice there, uh, even if you weren't hiring a new SAM, I would start to build my benchmark of what the ideal SAM in my program is going to look like. And I would at least then start doing some, I'll call it assessment, of my uh, maybe benchmarking on my current staff so that I can get a, a view into the future of what, what sort of my weed and feed process is going to have to look like. It's possible I've got some great talent on my team already, but it's also possible that there may be an evolutionary process that I may need to start on to start bringing in some additional talent. So. I would make sure that my new talent fit the benchmark. I would make sure my new talent is establishing what the bar expectation is. And I would make sure that my current talent is aware uh, that this is the, our SAM role, the SAM of the future for us that we need to have, that we need to have. And I would coach to that. And, and by just doing those few things, I think some people will even make their own conscious decision is this really for me? Can I get there? Or it may become evident that they may want to just be in a sales role or a different role. So that would be my suggestions. Thanks. And uh, that's, that's all the questions we have. So that's going to conclude the presentation on a best-in-class SAM. Um, on your screen, you see a couple of blue links. One of those is a link to chapmanhq.com where you can find all of our webinars, all of our resources, ebooks, podcasts, product sheets, things like that that we have for sales and account management, chapmanhq.com. And in the lower right hand corner of that slide, you'll see contact info. And that is for me, Denny Chapman at chapmanhq.com. And you also see my extension. If you have any questions on the webinar that you just participated on or anything else that might involve sales account, sales or account management best practices, Please don't hesitate to get in touch with me or the Chapman Group in either one of those methods. I certainly appreciate everyone taking the time to be on the call and online with us today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all either in person at some point in the future or on another webinar online. Best of luck and have a good day. Thank you.